guys, this is Melanie Cashin McCurry again with the North Carolina Cooperative Extension Office, the Avery County Center, and the FNET program. I want to show you how to make an easy omelet this morning. To make an easy omelet, the very best tip I can give you is to have a good pan. You want a little small pan, not a great big one, and you want it to have Teflon in it because that makes the pan slippery and the omelet won't stick as bad. So before I've done anything else, I've already cleaned my kitchen, sanitized my surfaces, and washed my hands. That's the most important thing we got to do. Then, after I did that, I've already went ahead and sprayed my pan with cooking spray so my omelet won't stick to the pan. So now I'm going to crack my eggs. I want to show you the proper way to crack an egg. When you crack an egg, you want to cradle it in your hand going from the fingers to your wrist, this way. And you're just gently holding it in your hand. Then you're gonna take a butter knife and not use the sharper end, you're gonna use the blunt end. And you're gonna do one or two quick whacks. You just want a little small crack across the center. That makes um, less of the egg from the inside touch the outside of the shell, which is where salmonella would be if it was gonna be in an egg. So you never want to just crack an egg in the bowl you're gonna whip it up in because you might get shell in there or you might have a bad egg. So you wanna hold it over another container, a small measuring cup or a small bowl will do, and then you wanna push your, your nails into the shell and pull out at the same time. And then you have a perfect cracked egg. Now I'm gonna rinse my fingers off a little. Now I want to look at that egg and make sure I think it looks okay. Now this egg looks fine. And what you're looking for is not what the white of the egg looks like, that clear part. What you're looking for is if there's any problems with the egg. And if you got a bad egg, you'd know it when you saw it. You don't have to worry, worry about it or wonder. You would know it. So if the egg's okay, then you're going to put it in your bowl. We're going to do another one. Same way, we've got it going from fingertip to wrist, we're going to whack it with the back of my knife, and then we're going to crack it in the small bowl again. Look at it and make sure the egg's okay, and if it is, then I'm going to put it into my bowl with the other one. Now, another thing is that I always want to wash my hands. Eggs can carry salmonella, and so you want your hands to always be clean after you've handled the raw egg mixture. So, draw them off. Now, I'm going to go ahead and turn my pan on and let it be heating a little bit. I'm getting warm. And then I'm going to take a fork and just beat those eggs. Now, some people like to add milk or water to their omelet mixture because they think that makes it fluffier. And you're more than welcome to do that, and you can. If you do, you just add about a tablespoon of liquid to it, and it will whip some air into it and make the omelet fluffier, but you don't really have to. So now after I've beaten it, I'm gonna put it in my omelet pan. Now, another trick to making an awesome omelet is to let it cook. Let it cook slowly. Don't get in a rush. And while it's cooking, don't stir it up. Because if you stir it up, it'll break the eggs apart like scrambled eggs. And an omelet is supposed to have a flat egg on the bottom filled with yummy toppings in the middle. So, I've got an egg turner here. We're just going to wait a minute and let that egg start setting up cooking. Now, as it cooks, what I'm going to do is rotate my pan and make sure the runny part in the middle gets to the outside parts so that it'll go ahead and cook, start cooking, and get firm. Now, while that's starting to get cooking and the pan getting warm, I want to show you what other things we've got to go in here. I've got some spinach. Now, you can cook this ahead of time, but I like to just put mine in raw. It preserves more than the nutrients in it, too. Then I have some canned mushrooms that I've drained, and I have some Mexican cheese, and then I have some salsa. I use mild salsa. 
So while we've been talking, this is starting to set up. And as you can tell, there's some hard part kicking already on the bottom, but the top is still running. So I'm just gonna rotate that around. And as it starts to cook, I'm gonna take my egg turner and kind of gently pull up on the parts that are starting to cook and let some of the raw egg get down under. We wanna make sure all of the egg gets good and done. Gently, gently, I'm just nudging that cook deck back and still rotating my pan around to make sure I get all of that raw egg down under there. Now sometimes when we make omelets, we'll get in a hurry. But if you get in a hurry, that doesn't make a good omelet. You gotta take your time and let that egg get cooked all the way through. Nobody wants raw egg. So it's starting to set up really well on the bottom. And all it means when I say set up is it means it's starting to get firm and not runny anymore. So as it's setting up on the bottom, you can hear it cooking probably. Start to pop a little bit. As it's already setting up, I want to let my ingredients start to get inside and start steaming. So I'm going to go ahead and put in my spinach and my cheese. And my mushrooms. You could even add a little salt and pepper to taste if that's something that you like. But these aren't really necessary to me. So turn my heat down a little bit. Now, what we gotta do is fold this egg over. So I've gotta take my um, egg turner and get it under there and gently fold it over. And of course, it's gonna tear while you're watching me, but that's okay. It'll still taste pretty good. So what's happening now is the inside of the egg is getting some time to steam to make sure the egg is cooked all the way through from the top to the bottom. And I want my cheese to melt and my spinach to steam and my mushrooms to get warm so that all those flavors will blend really well and be yummy. I think it's almost done. That didn't take very long, did it? So I've already got my plate ready and my salsa because that's one of my favorite parts. I'm going to go ahead and turn my oven off and slide my omelet onto my plate. See, a good sleek pan. And for me, the very best part of any omelet is the salsa on the top. It adds a lot of flavor, but it also adds a lot of vitamins and nutrients. You're getting another vegetable slid in there with your omelet for breakfast. So this is how you make a, a basic Mexican omelet. And I think you can do it at home. Just ask your mom and dad for help and make sure they know you're in the kitchen. And I hope you enjoy. Hi guys, I'm back again. This time I wanna show you a simple way for kids to make omelets at home. Now you still gotta be really careful because hot is hot. It doesn't matter whether you're getting it hot by the oven or the stove top or by your microwave. But this is a little bit simpler for kids to do. This method of making an omelet is you take a pie plate, a glass pie plate, and you put cooking spray in it. And I've already done that. As you can tell, mine's already slick. Then after you put the cooking spray in it really good and get it really slick, then you're just gonna go ahead and take your beaten eggs, pour them right in the pie plate, and make sure you rotate that egg all around. Then you're gonna pop it in the microwave. Now microwaves are all different and it depends on what wattage your microwave is and how you have your microwave set. So you can't just stick it in the microwave for a set two minutes and leave because some microwaves might burn it, some it might not be done yet. So what you have to do is you do it by maybe 
a minute at the first, and then you go back in little uh, increments of like 20 or 30 seconds and keep checking it. Now what you're looking for is for the egg to be set up. We don't want any more runny egg this time. We want the eggs to be set up. That's how you know it's done. So I'm gonna pop mine in the microwave and then we'll start back in a few minutes. Now guys, I'm back again. I microwaved it for one minute and I wanna show you you see the sides are starting to get done and they're setting up but the inside is still runny we don't want the egg like that so we're going to cook it a little bit more okay so i'm back again this time i've cooked the eggs and they're almost completely set up so now that they're almost completely set up it's time to put the cheese on it so if you notice i'm only putting the cheese on half of the omelet because you're going to fold over the other half so, I'm going to take my egg turner and try to slide it under there real gently and fold the egg over. Now, if your egg is completely cooked, then you won't see any runny parts in your pie plate. And mine doesn't have any runny parts. Now, my egg is hot enough that it's already melting that cheese. So, it's done and my cheese is melted, so I don't need to cook it anymore. But if it wasn't quite done when you start to flip it over, then pop it back in the microwave for a few more seconds and let it finish setting up. All that's going to do is melt that cheese and get it good and gooey. Now, one thing I want to show you, make sure I point out, is that if you notice, every time I've touched this pie plate after it was in the microwave, I didn't even go and check it in the microwave without having my pot holders. Things in the microwave can get just as hot as on the stovetop, and we want to make sure you're safe. So make sure mom and dad know you're in the kitchen, that you've washed your hands and you've started with clean surfaces in your kitchen, but also that you've used your pot holders and you've got them handy. So after my omelet is all melty and my cheese is all melty, I'm good to go. Now I have a simple cleanup on my pan too. It's not hard to wash that out with after it's had the cooking spray in it. So anyway, hope you enjoy this simple cheese omelet just as much as you did the Mexican omelet on the stovetop. Thanks and have a great day.